Hey guys, welcome to Trending Reviews. Today I'm going to be showing you how to connect any iPad to your MacBook so that you can use it as a second monitor. Ultimately that will save you a lot of money buying an external monitor to try and hook up with your MacBook or your laptop and use that as a second display. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Okay guys, so the first thing you have to do is go to duetdisplay.com on your MacBook. Download the app Duet Display. You can download it for either Mac or PC as well, so it'll work on Windows laptops as well. Make sure you've installed that and got that up and running so you'll see it in the top menu bar if you have a Mac. In addition, if you go to the iPad and install an app called Duet, you can go into the App Store, do a quick search for Duet and it should come up. Just a quick note, it is pretty expensive, but overall it's cheaper than buying an external monitor, so it's really worth the price. Okay, so we have everything installed. Now we can use that as an external monitor. One thing to note, you have to connect the iPad with your iPad cable to the MacBook via USB. You can only use the original cable, so if you've purchased, let's say, a backup cable or an external cable from a different company or a third party, it may not work with this app, so make sure you always have the original Apple cable. So let me put the USB in, connect that to my iPad. As you can see, it's just launched the app. The screen on my MacBook flashed. You can see that it's recognized this as an external display. Now, if you just go into the top menu bar, you'll see an icon uh, with the letter D. Now that's Duet. So if you click on that, you'll see it pops down. Now there's a, a few settings you can change here. So if you go into the uh, cog icon, you can look at preferences, you can change the graphics card type to be used, transparency on that, and you can change the display arrangement. So I've got my iPad on the right, I can choose the arrangement to push it on the left, depending on uh, how you want to set that up. Now if I just go ahead and show you the quality of the uh, second monitor, I'm going to open up Chrome and drag that across here. I made that full screen on the iPad. It does uh, seem to be working really well, so if I'm scrolling through the website, all looks pretty good. Pretty smooth, not, not as fast as uh, just on the MacBook itself. One thing I like to do is watch some videos on my second monitor while I'm doing my work on my first monitor. So if I just open up YouTube, and let's play a video and see how that sounds. I'll also make it full screen. I'll fall a little bit. It's not too bad, it's definitely watchable. It is pretty smooth, but again, remember I have the iPad 3, which is about five years old. It has one gigabyte worth of RAM, so I do really recommend that you have the later models of the iPad, the Retina display, and the faster processing power. So this is really useful if you want to just watch videos on a second screen while doing work on another screen. If you wanted to use that to do any high-end editing, video editing, image editing, etc. For example, with Photoshop, I wouldn't recommend it unless you have probably the latest iPad with the fastest processing power. If I just quickly show you coming out of that. Now I have Photoshop open. If I drag Photoshop to the iPad screen, you can see it doesn't do a great job. So I've got the brush tool selected. I probably want to use my finger to draw some stuff. I'm doing it uh, in black. As you can see, you can't see anything. Possibly that's because of the resolution. In the layer itself, I can see the drawing is actually being recognized, but on the iPad display, it's not there. If I drag this back, you can see here is the drawings I've been making. So there is some problems uh, with high-end applications. I've got Photoshop CC 2018. It's probably not compatible with this iPad version in the resolution that it's set at. 
But again, if you go into the duet option in the menu bar, you go to advanced settings. From here, you can choose the resolution for the iPad screen. So I've set it as just larger text. I can uh, make it a little bit smaller so you can see more on the screen. Click on that and it adjusts the resolution there. As you can see, it's gone really tiny. Uh, again, I'm gonna try and shake this about. You can see it's very laggy. So you need a really fast processing power to do that. It does recommend that you have retina displays as well for the best quality on there. If I choose the largest option here, this is what is recommended for the 9.7 inch iPad which I have. So that would uh, give you the best experience as an external monitor. But again, you can play around with different settings. I've set the quality as high, but again, if you reduce the quality to regular, that might speed things up a little bit on the iPad. So it all really depends on what you're looking for. Have a play around, uh, let me know what you guys think. If that was pretty useful, give this video a like and make sure to subscribe, I've got some more videos coming up, which I think you'd like. And I'll see you guys next time.